What's up guys, Coach Joe here, Elite FTS with Dave Tate. This topic I'm really excited about. So I've been doing hypertrophy training for a while. As you guys know, I actually trained with Mike Isertel a few years back. So I, I learned a lot from him when it came to hypertrophy training specifically. You know, we're, all those concepts apply. Okay, I'm not gonna dive too into them, uh, but I'm now transitioning into strength training. And I wanna talk to Dave kind of about what's the thought process in hypertrophy for a certain exercise and then as we transfer over to a strength block types of intention or, or should the intention change when we are going from one type of training to another to then maximize the benefits of that specifically for something like a strongman competition so we're going to riff back and forth we're going to use a chest supported row as an example of kind of how we can use those concepts and principles so take it away dave all right so what we were talking about is <clears throat> it basically it's where the exercise is going to fall into the training program so if it is strength and it's strongman training or it's powerlifting and you're talking about how you would classify the lats and then that's going to become what i would consider a secondary exercise so under the main movements then i'm not too sure a chest supported row would be what i'm going to put there it may be like a pen blade row or a barbell row and then to me that really in my brain i don't see that as a lat exercise i see it as a compound exercise that's working on spinal erector stability explosive force all those mm -hmm. different things so then it, it, it comes up in the hierarchy when when you're doing pure hypertrophy training i'm not sure that even has any value it not not the way that most of it's being done with the hypertrophy training that then becomes less prioritized as you start to move through the strength phase so the movement like the chest supported row, pull downs, all that's gonna be lower tiered mm -hmm. in the program. I don't think that needs to change from the way that you were training it. Okay. So when it goes down into that range, I don't think the maximum amount of weight that you can use is the main objective. It's are you targeting the areas you wanna target if it's upper back or lats? And then yes, progressive overload, all that kind of plays into that. But the intention of that is gonna stay the same because when, you, if, when it all becomes I like to call it just like muscle fucking. So when it all becomes that, and then every movement that you do, even to the chest supported row, dumbbell curls or whatever it is, it's just heaving stuff. Mm -hmm. All that becomes systemic di or systemic dynamic things. That you, it becomes more systemic to recover from. Right. Where if those accessory movements at the very end are only for hypertrophy, but then you can lower the complete total demand that's on the system. It's gonna be easier to recover from the main things. Mm -hmm. The main things that are obviously become harder to recover from because the load, the tonnage, spinal loading, all that's higher. So it, it never made sense to me to be able to have the low tiered exercises being trained super heavy with a lot of momentum and force because is it really gonna make you stronger? Mm -hmm. And that's not the intent of why it's there. It's the hypertrophy is why it's there. But I think when most of the people that are watching this are just probably nailing all of it exactly the same way. Right. There's no intention. So they aren't listening to what Dr. Mike or other people would say as far as full range of motion, mm -hmm. contraction and intent. They're training everything like that, which has its benefits you know, in certain areas, right? right? But it, I don't think it has to be an all or nothing. Mm -hmm. you know, let me dial that back just a little bit. If it is an off season, it's all hypertrophy. Yes, it can be that. But then there has to be some kind of transitional block. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, you're like in a transitional block. So then you kind of mix, you know, what's in there. And then so for, to use the chest support and rows example, it's one that I'll take people through that come through the clinics that I do. So what I want you to do, because we're trying to work for upper back here. So when you go ahead and do this, before you go ahead and take it out, before you even start the pull, I want you to feel a stretch in your upper back. Yeah, so see yep. how that just dropped about three inches? So that's now stretching the upper back more so there's more range of motion. Keep your elbows out and then pull up and pull your shoulder blades together, elbows out further. Pull this hard, okay, then back down. Find that full stretch, full stretch, then bring it up. Squeeze the shit out of the shoulders, good. Hold, yeah, again, and then keep the, the eccentric slower. Good, stretch, and then pull. And then down, so you feel all that yeah. intention there. All right, so go ahead and rack it. So that's if you're gonna do it for that upper back. Now, right. let's say you want the intention now to be the lats. So go ahead and use the handles again, and you're gonna pull your elbows towards me. So now you're gonna tuck them and flex the lats. Actually, before you go, find the stretch here now in your lats. You may have to pull your sternum up. Oh, 
Find, find a stretch here. See the stretch yeah, there? Yeah, it's different there, yeah. All right, now row with the elbows and flex the lats. Oh, see the difference? Oh, yeah. So now it's here, lat. Find the stretch in the lats again. All right, and then go and flex here in the lats. Good. Totally different. There, and then again. Good. All right, so where, where that falls is you'll see programs, and we were talking about this earlier, that will have vertical, vertical pulls and horizontal rows. That doesn't make sense to me because you can do horizontal rows, elbows out, and it's completely different than if you're tucking your elbows in. One's upper back, one's lats. The same thing on the lat pull down. So mm -hmm. what's the intent? Right. What are you trying to work? Now, how you're going to physically put that in your program will depend upon if it's the bodybuilding part towards strongman. Do you right. feel your upper back? Because now I would say this is more activation yeah. than it's going to really be strength. Do you feel that your upper back needs more muscular development? Do you feel your upper back right. isn't activate? Because if it's not activating the way that you think it should, say on a log to be able to stabilize, right. then I would argue and say doing that really, really heavy is going to be counterproductive compared to doing it that way and you're really squeezing the shit out of that to be able to do two things, to be able to enhance that activation, but you're also increasing the isometric strength of being able to hold that position there tighter and stronger. 100%. And for me, that's what I would gear towards is, yeah, hypertrophy stuff, you know, lat development, great. For strongman specifically, as a transition, I want to get my upper back as strong as possible. Yeah, so now the defense. reps then are going to go three, five, okay. right? So now when the reps go three, five, it's going to become something I would feel more compound. Right. You already figured this out. That's yeah. the pen play row, the barbell right, row. Right. Things that kind of fall in there, then naturally it's going to fall after a deadlift because it's yeah. already set up. But it's just the, the whole point of that intention is huge. It's, it's so minute, but in the, the grand scheme of things, it's, it's major just because you can get on this and like you said, just muscle fuck things. You know probably get some sort of stimulus but just those minor adjustments to having that intention goes a long way with actually benefiting my my performance and that's kind of like, like you said how i would you know kind of transition my thought process and I, I think that's missing from a lot of people is just that step of what is the intention you probably yes. ask that to people all the time and they look at you like well the first question would be why are you doing this right like so if it's just like why are you doing this mm -hmm well because i want my back to get stronger then i would default there and say stronger for what you know for strong man do you think this is the best exercise for that right is there something better you're gonna say yeah there's probably something better which is gonna be the barbell road mm -hmm. okay so then let's get stronger at that so then yeah. why are we going to do this right well i want to do that for the isometric strength the activation and hypertrophy cool now we don't need to use three plates per side mm -hmm. because we can actually get more result from the outcome we're looking for doing it that way you see yeah. what i'm saying so no, originally what happens is you're putting the wrong exercise in the program for what you think is the right purpose yeah the purpose right but the exercises there's no bad exercises right right there's just bad use of the exercises and where they fall into the mm -hmm. program and how they're being utilized if it is strength we default to three to fives mm -hmm. right Singles, if it's maximal strength, but the barbell rows aren't, you know, so that's uh, under that first level, it's three to five. It doesn't make sense to do the three, three to five reps on a pull down. Yeah. It just, it's just, yeah. It's just, uh, it, you can't wrap your head around to even do Like, how would you do that? Right. You know, do you need two reps to like build the momentum on the pull down yeah. to be able to get the three? It doesn't fit. So what best fits? Right. And I, I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but I haven't. If I talked to a straw man competitor, I was like, what was the difference in your program? And they said, oh, doing lap pull downs for three to five, like never. Like that's not gonna be, yeah, well, exactly. that's not gonna be their answer. Uh, but I just think you know, with the audience, we have those intermediate going to advance level uh, people or athletes. And I think if you look at your program, this is something that's key to do when you're assessing yourself and your, in your program. Like, like have the intention, figure out the purpose. Does it make sense? I think those things are what are going to take you to the next level yeah. and also save you unneeded stress, which can be used better for recovery to have more efficient training sessions and be able to push the way you have to push so you can get stronger in general. But often I just, sometimes I get programs and I see six exercises just because, right? You say, oh, I want to get my mm -hmm. back stronger. And yeah, those exercises work your back, but what is the intention of those exercises in this program? we can probably flip something around or change it. Just even specifically on here, 
yes, I'm doing a chest supported row, but on the first one, upper back looks similar, but then just that slight adjustment by raising my sternum or changing, you know, my elbow angle a bit, completely different feel in the lats entirely. Yeah. So just being able to understand those concepts, you know, I think is huge. And it's obviously something I'm gonna take and put in my training uh, because as I'm transitioning, th that's the purpose is to get better, get stronger, have more time to recover and, you know, obviously execute in a competition. So yeah, great. Love it. Thank you so much. Yep.